hi guys first of all everything you need will be listed below above the comments um today these are the colors i've chosen to use i've got primo sculpey in peacock blue i've got um turquoise surnit metallic which i'm going to be blending them together then i've got um I think it's just called purple. Yeah, I've got um, Fimo Pro in purple and Cernit Pearl in purple. I think that's called purple, violet. Okay, so they're going to be mixed together and they're going to be mixed together. And then for little odds and ends, I've got these. So I've got Cernit Metallic in rust, Cernit Metallic in bronze and Sculpey Primo in gold. Okay, so that's all the clays I'm using. So I'll just get those out of the way. So first of all, I want to mix this 50-50, so it's half of each. Same with this, 50-50. You don't need to, you can use any of these colours, but I've chosen to do that to get the effect I want. Okay, so let me just get these out of the way too. So here, what I've done is I've mixed the two blues and I rolled it out on a zero. I've mixed the two purples, rolled it out on a zero. And here I've got the rest, which I've also rolled out on a zero. Okay. And over here, these are for like the plain scraps, I suppose I'd call them. So that's the bronze. That's this purple, this blue, um, gold, sculpey, and the rest. Um, so if I need to pick bits for making it, they're there. Okay. So that's the basics. So the first thing is um, I need to put these together. And I haven't done this yet. This way, I'm trying. To, I've done one already, but I'm going to try and change the style a bit now. So I'm going to take a straight line of this, but at a very slight angle. You'll see what I mean. Well, if I do this first, I suppose I'll make it clearer. Basically, I'm doing the vein at the middle, but I want it to narrow at the bottom. So I'm going to take it down to a point and bring it out about that far if you can see that that's probably about four or five mil and then I'm going to be putting that here and buffing it up against the edge okay so if you can get that up as smoothly as you can and then that's the middle so i can move that to one side and then with this one as well i don't really need to cut it um i will though a little bit i think it might just make things easier and then i'm going to butt this up and hope i might have to adjust the bottom end we'll see yeah cut that there at that angle hopefully that'll be okay and I haven't cut it too far basically I've got to make sure it's as long as the cutter I'm using which is four and a half centimeter teardrop here okay so as long as I've got that amount of room I'm okay and I have so that's perfect in that way I'm just going to cut away what I don't need which is going to be starting with the bottom and then I'm going to try and centralise the cutter as best I can. Again, I've put it on a... Oh, I, I should have used a smaller one, but I put it on a tile so I can move it around. Okay, so I think... I think that's about where I want it. So I'm just going to cut it. I don't want any cling wrap or anything because I want it to stay solid on the edges. Okay, so now I've done that, they can just go over with the spares. Okay. Now, what I want to do is elongate it a little bit. And I've got a little bit more purple at the bottom here than the blue, but that doesn't matter because that sort of thing will look nice with a feather. So, I'm just hoping they're all connected together enough. I'll give it a little encouragement just in case. And put that like that right then I'm going to put that through on a number two on the machine I'm 
Okay, it's caught a little bit, but I can burnish it. I just need to get a bit of paper. Got some paper here. Okay, so that's the length. So now I immediately want to start thinking how can I manipulate the shape so it's more like a feather. So I'm going to start doing that now and every opportunity afterwards um, just to give it a bit of a distinctiveness so it looks more organic. I'll try and do it again in a bit, but I don't want to overdo it now. Okay, so that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, <laughs> Just trying to remember how I did the last one. I want to try and make sure I get it right. So on this side now, I'm going to be putting myself a little um, twisty pattern. So I'm going to do a little bit of rolling here. Now, I want to make the blue. That might not be long enough, actually. I want to make the blue um, thinner than the purple. So I'll start. Let me just ball it up first, and then I can roll it in a minute. Right, there's an air bubble there. And mind, and a fingerprint now. So I just start rolling out this blue, and I'm just going to use this to roll out because it makes it quite even. Just make sure your pressure's the same both sides. And if it's not, you can adjust. Okay, so there's the blue. I'm going to do similarly. I don't know if it'll roll from it's a square at the minute. So I'll see if I can get it to round. Yeah. So that'll probably do for that one. This one here, I'm just going to do the middle a bit more. Doesn't look right. It's better. And then I'm going to add that to that and butt it up gently. Okay, so just run your fingers along to butt it up. It's longer than I'm going to need, so but I'll roll it first. Okay, so I'm just going to start twisting it one end and moving down gently. Sorry, I think I might have been off camera a bit there. So anyway, I've rolled two sausages, one thinner than the other. The blue one's the thinner one. Okay, so keep trying to make sure you've got it even and I'm going to try and get it to twist as much as I can and as evenly as I can so keep your eye on your twists okay so I'm nearly happy with it not quite there how long does it need to oh, that's plenty so i'll just cut that off there for now and make sure i twist this end because it's so easy to forget the ends and i can see where that one wasn't twisted like it should have been okay so now i'm going to do something i don't usually do i'm going to use liquid clay i only usually use it when i have to and i think this is the have to I am going to, um, I think, cover it in liquid Kato afterwards to hold everything secure, but I think it might be a good idea to to use a liquid Kato. So that one's going to go on this side. No, this one's going to go on this side, actually. So I'm just going to paint down there with the liquid clay. So I don't want any excess liquid clay on this if I can help it. I want to make sure it's not showing. So this is a bit long and tedious. I mean, I've shown you how to do the basic feather and how you decorate it really is up to you. And you're welcome to watch me do it or shoot through just to get an idea. And I don't want you on the gold. Okay. So fingers crossed. Can apply this gently. Oh, isn't it sort of all? Look, there's something stuck to it there. 
knife where are you somehow it's captured a little bit the gold or the bronze I wonder if I can turn it a little bit it's not too late I want to show as much of that um, colour as possible, that rust. So I'm pushing it out as far as I can. Um, these little rubber things are quite handy for this sort of thing rather than using your fingers. Note to self. Okay, so... I think that that's too much. So it's got a little twist there that's not picking up. There you go. Maybe. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave that to settle. I'll cut the bottom off though because when we do the other side, it'll be in the way. Okay. Over the other side. Oh. Sorry, I'm in a bit of pain at the moment. <laughs> um, so for the other side, I'm going to use. Um, a piece of the purple and a piece of the bronze so they're roughly the same shape This in the middle of the table is making me work at the side, isn't it? I need to, um, do I turn, turn it that way when I'm working? I just don't want to knock it. <laughs> okay. So with this now, I'm going to push it together. And with this side, I want to do a square rather than a circle. So I've got to hope I can work this out so push that down a bit it might actually be easier to roll it into a circle first than a square yeah I'm going to do that first and then I can twist it right so I'm going to twist this first to get a pattern Still oblongy, so it's sort of knobbly. And Just trying to even up the if I cut it and take that off. Take that to at least there, that's the best part of the pattern. Just give that a bit more of a twist and then I'll see if I can square this off. So I roll it first. Make sure I'm getting it all even. And then I'm going to see if I can square it off. Now that's probably more than enough there, so I won't make it harder for myself. So I'm putting it there and I'm just going to gently press. Okay, so it sort of squares it off a bit and then try and put it sideways. And do that again. Just hope it's not too thin.
There you go, that's square enough, I think. Hopefully it'll roll okay. Now with this, only hold the corners as you twist and then you get a nice, um, more like, um, sort of that iron twist look. Oh, look, something on there again. So easy, isn't it? Yeah, sort of looks more like iron work, doesn't it? Because of the square, it's got a harsh twist. So now I'm just gonna put that on this side. Okay, and I've got to, no, I want the liquid clay first, don't I? Oh, there's a hair there annoying me. So same as before. Let's see if I can get it to butt there nicely. Fingers crossed. Okay. trying to make sure I'm revealing as much of that bronze as I can. Okay. I think that's about it. Now, with this, I'm thinking um, to use it as the base of the stem bit. I'm going to be putting um, something underneath it anyway, but I want to, I'm just doing this ad hoc because last time when I made it, the bronze in the middle, I left that bigger and I forgot to do it. So I'm just trying to make amends here, ready for how we finish this top bit. As long as I've got it there and it's attached, it won't be showing. So that will do nicely for now. And I can sort it out when I get there. Right, okay, so that's the next step. Now, what I've done is um, find myself, I haven't got much, so I've tried to find myself things I could add to it. So this is all ad hoc, random, you know. Um, I've just got some little seed beads in a few different colours. I've got a little bit of... Um, that shell stuff, some gold beads, and what else have I got? A couple of Savorsky crystals, um, a couple of little beads I like. But I also, just in case, I don't know if I will or not, I've also got a couple of little cabotrons I've made at a different point, and I thought as I do it, I'll see if any of them go. Um, and I've got these two little long ones that match that. So that's what I've chosen to use because it's all I've got. I wish I had more. Well, it's all I've got that'll go with this anyway. So now, I'll put that up there for the minute. Right now, I've got my stuff to the side as and when I need it. Now I also want a little ball tool because I'm going to choose now to make the odd little little holes in it. Like in here, I want to do the odd big hole, just like that. And because this is narrow, I won't fit in as many as last time. But still have a go. Okay, so that's one there. 
I know what I didn't do. Oh no, I should still be able to do it, but oh, where's my tool? Using my trusty tool with the texture on the end that I use so much for everything. Um, I should have done it. I'm going to move this over just for a minute to do this. And I can slide it back after. Right. Here. I want to mimic the leaves going down pattern. Or the leaves, the feather um, layers going down. So I'm just going to push push like that all the way down taking it up to that copper or bronze edge but not any further and I'm only doing this on the one side the other side I'm going to do differently okay so you can start to see what I'm doing and I'll be rolling back over that top bit in a minute I don't think I'll roll this I think I'm going to press instead but you can see it's creating that sort of feather look okay so now i've done that i'm gonna try and roll this back over hopefully using this rubber tool to stop it disturbing it just hope it wasn't easier said than done Sorry if you can't see, but there's no other way I can do it. Right, I think that's more or less it. A bit too far there, not enough there. Right, I think that's about it. Okay, so then I've got all these colours here. So all I do is I'm just rolling out quite a few little sausages in different colours and I'll start playing around. So I'm thinking, um, let's look at the middle first. So looking at the middle, I want to add some purple. I want to bring the colours into each other, if that makes sense. Um, if you roll a sausage and you get it all the same width, then if you make balls and that, you can control whether they're the same size or different so that's sort of where I'm basing this from so I do want to create I'll just create one big one at the moment I say big it's that size so I'm going to use a bigger ball tool with that one and I'm just going to place that up above that hole and just push the ball tool into the middle okay and this is literally just use your imagination um, and do what you feel you want to do I've right, got some gold rolled I need some copper rolled and I'll need some blue as well whatever's left of these colours because I think they really complement each other lovely I'm probably going to make some sort of makumi gane with it so I might do a tutorial so if you do do this and you've got scraps if you don't mind keeping them I promised before I'd do a tutorial on something um, and I never well, no, I did do it but the tutorial didn't work out and I didn't have another one to redo it so 
I lost it, but th with this one I'm definitely going to try something with it because the colours together are lovely. Okay, so that'll do for the minute. Now, what do I want next? This is sort of a um, little bit long and time consuming. I think what I'm going to do is see where I want the biggest jewels to go first and that'll give me a little taste of... I want to put this heart on now. I'm not sure if it's too big or whether it would be okay. Whoops. Do you know I am? I'm going to put it in the widest part. Just stick it like that for now, make an imprint, and then I can just use some liquid clay. I'm going to be bold here and try it. Now, oh, where have I put that liquid clay? Better pour some more. Probably rubbed it onto something and didn't even realise. So I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid clay into the centre of that so when I apply pressure it'll give it some grip. Just trying to make sure it's straight and central. Yeah. Okay. So that's that one done. What other ones have I got that are quite bad? I've got two long versions of that and I don't. I did it in the last one. I'm just wondering whether to put them at an angle. I haven't got anything else smaller, but they're so lovely because they've got both colours in. Okay, I'm going to go there, the same angle as the lines are going. And then this one, I'm going to put down as far down as I can and try and make sure it's the same angle. Is that the same angle? I can see it better on the computer than I can in front of me. Right, that's roughly the same. So if I remove them and add a bit of liquid clay. This is why I decided I was going to use something, either Kato liquid or something. I don't really want it shiny. So I'm thinking that might, I've got a, I have got a matte varnish, but um, we'll see. Yeah, okay, so I think they're okay. So the next thing now I want to do is go around them with something. So I am going to now... With that one, I'm going to do purple. That's a dead cert. I don't want it too big. Uh, I don't want them too big. What the artist that inspired me, she'll tend to make a lot of the little balls with the holes to fill in and accentuate things. So that's what the sort of pattern, the sort of way I'm going to go. Sort of, she does she does lots more styles than this, but this is the one that I found with her. And I think she's Moon Creations on Instagram as well as Etsy. Okay, so I'm just trying to cut them all round about the same size. So when I make balls, they'll be round about the same size. I'll do a couple more just in case. Right, so I'm just going to make a handful of balls. I mean, if you want to fast, this is time consuming, so if you want to fast forward through it, um, you'll hopefully be able to get a gist and you can stop at any points where you just need to know. But I actually really love it. It's a bit like sitting there with um, some sort of colouring in and you're creating something, you know. There's no mica powder, there's no inks, there's no paint. You know, it's just nice because you're literally just playing with the clay, which I don't do often enough. Right, will that be enough? Not yet, I don't think. 
I might as well do them all and hope that will be enough. Okay, so with those ones, I'm going to use the smaller thing, and then I'm just going to put the ball right up to the heart, and then just push it in. So I'm picking it up with the ball tool. Have to be careful there. That's going over. If I can. I hope there'll be enough room to fit them on the other side. I think there will. I might have to move the main vein bit. Do you see? So now it's giving it a bit of a pattern. It, it doesn't look so bare and lost. Gonna move this over just for a second so I can fit these in and then I'll put it back. Oh I need a few more so it seems and then just ease that back and I just need two or three more two probably Cut three just in case. Okay, so that'll do for that for now. So I'm just going to take two smaller blue. I mean, don't literally just copy me. Use your own imagination because you'll be really chuffed with what you'll be able to do. But if you use some of these techniques and any more you may know of that I don't, at least you can um, apply them and uh, you'll end up with something you really like. I'm going to put that there and that one there. And then I'm just going to push the bigger one and then push the slightly smaller one there so that just puts two in there I've got a lot less room in that middle bit this time around I'm going to do one more big hole there so it just stands out and then I'm going to add a couple of gold I wasn't sure about this gold with it but I think it could be a bit bland without it so I'm just going to, I'm not using it for the, any main bits, just for an accentuator. So let's get three balls around about the same size. And I'm going to get a few dark, two, I'll say two, we'll see how it goes. Just, it's like choosing what colour to use to colour in next, you know, it's as simple as that. Now, when I did this the other day, it went quite well, but I'll have my fingers crossed that it goes well this way too. Okay, so I'm picking that one up and I'm going to add that here. And then the next biggest one, next, no, next, but mm, next to it actually, yeah. Then I'm going to add one of the gold ones below. Another gold one below. Above. And one more below. And I'm just being random here. Um.
And I'm actually going to use a couple of bits of this where it's mixed, so the colours are multi-colours, to do my next thing. So, one that size, one a bit bigger, one a bit bigger again, then I'm going to go smaller again. And hopefully they'll come out looking like that. I'm trying to make the balls slightly different sizes. Um, that's my aim. And then I want a couple of light gold little ones. I feel like you must be bored stiff watching this. <laughs> but it's the only way I can show you. So now I'm not going to make holes in these. I'm just going to drop them because they're... They're clay to clay where I don't feel I need to use anything. I did on the ones going down just because they need to be kind of staying in the same place. I just apply a very gentle pressure. In fact, I did, last time I did it, I did actually very carefully press down on the two main veins just to give them a slightly. Just don't go wrong. Yeah, that's it. Just give them that slightly. They're all even then, you know. Um, right, so now we've got to do this. So. Trying to think of the best way to do what I'm trying to do. Right, I want that there and a little one there with a slight gap, and then down here I'm going to put one there. And what colour will I blue? Blue, 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 I think. Just a small one. Because it is on its own colour. Putting that big heart there, I haven't left myself much room for this. And... Uh, It's going to be a bit awkward trying to do what I want to do now. Um, one more gold one up there at the top, I think. Maybe even two. And then... That one there. Little bonds one. But I want to leave a gap, so it'll make sense in a minute. I couldn't explain it to you. Let's hope I can still do it. So let me just get these out of the way because I finished with those. Move those for a minute. Now, I want to get this rust colour and I'm going to I'm going to have to roll it out first. I'm going to take it down to number three and see if that's what I want. Because it might be a four. Yeah, I'm going to take it down to a four. Okay. And I'll just tidy up the one side. Oh dear. That's got covered in purple. Look at it. I should mustn't let these touch each other. They're like magnets. Let's try this side. Yeah, that's fine. I just fold it over and put it back through. Yeah, that should be long enough. Right, so I'm just going to cut a straight line here. And what I need to do now is look down the side of this and try and work out how many mil upwards I need to be to make this level with the vein going down. It'll make sense as I do it. Um, I'm going 
going to do it in two. So I'm thinking about two mil. So I'm going to make a guess and I'm going to cut that there at two mil. And this is the fiddly bit now. Because I've got to get it to stand. So I need, where's that tool gone? There it is, right in front of my eyes. Do you do that? I spend so much time looking for something that's right in front of my eyes. Okay, so I'm going to try and ease this on. I haven't. This lady does um, that that does this design. She does do tutorials on Etsy. She sells them, and I haven't actually watched one. I've only I'm only viewed her finished pieces, and that sort of look where I thought, oh, this is beautiful. And yes, um, I did contact her and I did get her permission to do this and she'll be watching the tutorial. Okay, so she'll probably be letting me know afterwards how, how it would all have been so much easier if I'd done this, that or the other. And I will watch one of her tutorials because I think um, she's really talented. I just lost the bead there. No, it's because it's blue. I'm not seeing it. No, that's probably not the ideal way to have done it. I bet there's an easier way. And if you know it, by all means, let me know. Let me just ease that in. It definitely needs easing in from the bottom, preferably. needs to come in some more but I'm not quite sure if it's going to do it. It's very very stuck to the clay below if you know what I mean. They're both that soft serenity. Well, that's as far in as I'm going to get that one without ruining it. See if I can move this one in a bit more because that's what looks nice is when it's Actually going in, it's not allowing the bottom to move. Did it much better on the one I did the other day. I'll show it you later. Or near the end, and I'm not happy with that top at all. So no, that's all coming off and I'm redoing it. I'm not happy with that. Plus I felt it was a little bit too wide, air uh, high. Right, let's try again. I have done it successfully, it's just that I don't know whether I'm more nervous because I'm on camera or no idea. I'm stretching it now. It's a bit wobbly, isn't it? See if we can straighten it up a bit. That's it, you stay now. Okay. Right, now I've got to turn it around and do similar at that end. Avoid cut it, which wasn't the wisest move, was it? I've got to try to remember not. 
stretch it. And then just easing it in where the gap is in order for it to come back out. Okay, so let's got to tidy that up now. I'll try and ease that edge down a bit so it blends a bit. That's it. I think that'll do for a minute. Right now. I need to go around these and I'm not quite sure what colour to go around them in. I don't really want to use the rust again but I, I, the gold's a bit light. I'm under right, I'm going to do bronze and um, rust. We think I'll do one of each. So we want rest sausage and a copper sausage and again I'll just use my credit block to to get it to about the size I want hope you can see that Is that one? And there's that one. Let's hope it's enough. If not, though, I can make some more. I might just chop those two ends off so they're straight. And then I'm just going to do. You're a bit big. No, I move them. I lost my um, lost my focus then. Hopefully that's enough. If not, I'll be back. Oh look, it's one step to me finger. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's one of them. So. I'm going to put the darker at the bottom and the lighter at the top. Okay, so hopefully that's enough. Gosh, it's everywhere. So I'm just picking up the ball. Uh -huh. I see you, Mr. Hare. Use that one a bit further down because it's slightly larger. Let's 
same with the gold. You're out, you're out. I think that's enough. But yeah, I imagine there's a million things you could do in this kind of a style. But I'm just doing a basic thing because I've never really done it before. I've seen similar stuff around, but not as stunning as what this lady makes. Okay, and the same with this one. Just in colour these balls are quite forgiving if you do get the hole in the wrong place you can more or less redo it going to fit a big one there on the end. There we go. Now I need to, I'm going to add some, um, some of these gold, or they're like a rose gold, I think, balls. No, they're not going to hold with liquid clay. I'm going to have to use the Kato over them in order for them to work. So if I drop one there, I can move them about in a minute. I'm just going to try going down in sizes. Because they're all different sizes. And I got these off Amazon if anyone's interested. And they do them in lots of different colours. Let me move these first. Oh no, I might as well do them. add them now, haven't I? That's it. Okay, let's give these a little move around. Do these first and then see if I want to add any more or not. Just going to push them down with the then side of the knife. So to make sure they're straight first. Whoops, no. That's about it. Because the handle's thick, it's hard to push it down. I haven't got anything else here to... Oops. Right, now I need to bring a bit of blue over to this side. So I'm just going to dollop a few... Um, these blue ones. I'm doing that thing again where I start talking, start thinking and don't finish. Just heard myself. I'm going to put that one there and then this one straight underneath. <laughs> right, now I'm not going to put anything else big in but I did have got these seed beads to have a go with. And 
I had some um, oh there they are some Vorsky crystals I'm sure I've got some in purple but I couldn't find any so take a few of these out and see how many I use now with these when I'm adding them in I get um, a toothpick ah, sorry <sighs> Um, it's going to be a bit similar, isn't it? I've got two blue there and two blue there, so I'm just... I suppose they won't hurt. So I'm going to put it on sideways to the holes. So you can actually apply a bit of pressure. and Make sure the hole's sideways. Um, I should have gone blue, purple, blue. I would have uh, changed it about a bit, wouldn't it? So they're slightly smaller, but that doesn't matter. Oops, bye. enough I'm not happy with them there on their own there's something missing so I'll go back to that um also got these How many of these will I need and where I definitely want one there, and I think I might put a purple in upright, and another one there, if I can get it to go the right way. I'll push those in. Right, that do with that. I don't think I can really... I could add um, one or two of these down there, because it's looking a bit bare, isn't it? But again, I'm very really limited on colour, so if you've got more, the better. Come on. It's gone in sideways and won't stand up. Where's that toothpick? Oh, have ya. There. Right, I just want to tell you what I did have and I haven't used and I bet it's too late now. I'll bet it's too late, unless I can find somewhere I can put it where it would fit. Just got to look for some nice pieces. So I've got some of this, um... <laughs> can't think of the word. For abalone. Came eventually. Just need to find something that's the right kind of shape that it will look okay. Possibly that and that. Also see what the blue side's like. Again, I got this off Amazon. Can't see that's going to go anywhere. Right. With this, I'm going to be doing holes anyway. So I can basically put this, if I can find enough nice pieces, but seem an acceptable shape. Wait, 
No one invited you. Oh, come on, you're going to make me mark it. Right. So I am going to take a chance with this. Are you trying to say no, not me? I just broke it into it. Oh dear, I didn't think you'd break that easily. See what we can do to sort you out. It's going to be alright. Just press it down very gently. I want another piece to go up in the middle somewhere. See, that's beautiful, isn't it? But it's too big and it's not the sort of thing I'd want to break up. Sorry about this. It's the last minute. See, that's nice, but it's just a little bit too perfectly shaped. I wonder if I can break it a bit so it gets more of a jagged edge. And it will or won't work. We well, didn't, well, I didn't want you to break your did, and now I do want you to. You won't. by that one no it's not jagged enough it doesn't look organic no, I'm just going to use that I'll be here all day if I can get it to go the right way need to blend in mate and hopefully I've got to push that one down so that one shouldn't break don't misshape it too much right I'll do I'll just go offline in a minute while I just tidy this mess up. Okay, so I'm back. So what I've done is I've um, I've added two more gold bits there just to take that up to the vein, main vein. Um, and this side here I've just dotted around the bits. Okay, so now I'm going to dot down this as well. And there are those big holes, so just go around them and then they still remain part of it. And I mean, it could probably add more. Who knows? Um, but I'm going to leave this one at this, and then I'll show you the other one I did as well, which is slightly different, and then you can, it might give you an idea. So here again, I'm going to be trying to make in this, trying to make a square. So let me get the angle better. It's a bit long. I'll just take some off. Right. So I'm just going to be pushing into this sausage a little bit. Try and get it to get a, a squareness and then stand it up best I can. And then we'll go back down again very carefully. And hopefully I've squared it the other way a bit. Oh, that was clever. My nail just caught on that. Hang on. I do that up in a minute, at least it's back. Right, now, what I want to do now, I want to bring this in a bit, it's a little bit thick. This is just... Now I want to twist this again, but if you just hold the corners rather than the flat bits, you get to keep that kind of iron, iron spiral look. I can't think of a better word. Never worked with it myself. Okay, so I'm 
And I'm going to need about three pieces of this. So, let's have a guess about there. So I'm putting that there, so it's going to be mimicking rope in a way. So I'll just put that there loosely for now. Um, put another piece above. Actually, that needs a bit more twist in that one. And then one more. I don't know whether I need three or four. I think three is going to be plenty. Actually, now I'm going to do four. Give that a little bit more of a twist. And then... Turn it around the right way. I've got too many bits of clay lying around here. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut down there. And then ease that down. And same down there. Ease that down. Okay, and then... Oh, I'll take away that excess there. Now you've got a few options here. Oh, I spy it my little eye, something I don't want to see. Where are you gone, Twist? Gonna need a very thin one of you to hide what's underneath you. Just in a bit of blue and purple poking out the bottom. Don't want that. So I'll try and do a thinner one. But just enough to cover it. You've gone a bit wonky, haven't you? Right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm struggling here, but I actually felt I was going mad sitting around in pain. I thought I need to get myself focused on something, so I'm not driving myself up the wall. Right, all I want here, I'm going to choose to make a... A loophole there, nothing special. Um, where's me little thing to do it? Oh, we won't. Oh, there he is. Right, I'm going to use this to make a hole there. So when it is baked, there's somewhere to put the thread through. And then I'm still going to add. Just the two little, no, I think have I got room for all of them? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to add the blue there. And the purple there. And I'll leave that one face up. And then one little one above. I'm just going to round that top there a little bit so it looks better. Right, now that's nearly done. Now it's just time to decide where I'm going to split the leaf. So I'm going to go choose there. So all I do is push that up, yeah, and then bring that down a bit. Okay, then I should choose somewhere. Actually, I'm going to keep an eye on both sides because I could end up making life difficult for myself. So here, I'm going to do one here, push that out, round that down. I'm going to do one here because it fits to go there. I'm going to try and twist this a little bit more when I move it onto the back end, just to give it a little bit more shape. I didn't want to do it yet. Okay, so that one's pulling it out slightly and up and that one down. Okay. And then the same at this side. Where am I going to go? 
one here. Push it up and out and round that down. I don't want them to be in identical places both sides, but I haven't left myself many options. I'm going to put that one there and down. That went out and up. I might do another one there, so I've got a second one. And then I've just got to push that round, because I didn't do that right. I might do a little one up here. Okay, so that's it ready now to go on its back in. I'm just going to turn it off while I sort out the back in. I'm going to I mean, use whatever colour you like. I think I'm going to use a black. Um, and this is a two, so I'm going to roll the black out on the three, I think. Okay, so I'll roll black out on the three and then I'll be back. Okay, so I put it onto the black on the number three. And I'm just, I've just pressed all my little feather ends down to make sure they're all adhered. Because that is uh, important. Okay, and then I'm just going to go around it. Roughly at first. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around. And then I should put this in the oven with the other one. Um, I'll just show you the other one quickly because that's got to go in the oven as well. So it's still pre-bake. So that's the other one I made. I don't know. Let's see if I can hold them up with how far I got with this one. Okay. So they are a bit different. But um, I'm going to put them both in the oven together. Okay, so I'm just going to finish cutting this out and then I shall put that in the oven with the other one. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. Hi guys, I'm back and it's baked. Before I do anything else, I realise when I look back on the bits of the video I've done, I actually named the lady wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, the name of her, her page on Etsy and her Instagram is Mandarin Moon. I've put it at the front of this tutorial now. So apologize, I've, I've already apologized to the lady, Chris. Um, but there you go. I was feeling so bad. I'm, I'm on the next day now. Um, I couldn't do any more last night. Okay, so this has come through now and it's baked. Okay, so the bat needs doing next now I don't want to have to over bake and keep baking so I'm going to put the back on now and then I'll gently lay it down and do the Kato liquid clay at the same time and then it should be fine because there's not enough pressure from the pendant to ruin the the pattern now I've just run some um, black scrap clay out on a number six and I, I'm only pressing with this at the moment for it to hold use liquid clay if you feel you need to um i'll have to go over it because no doubt i'll put fingerprints in but it does help to i push it into the edges hard so it gets a good grip and make sure you've got no air bubbles so if i pull this back now i just need to follow it around with a knife It's not as easy as doing the normal pendants because there's a lot of in and out here, but I'm still going to do it because I think it looks nice. I'm not sure at the moment yet whether to leave it black or whether to use um, I've got a choice of a turquoise or a copper wax. And I'm just not sure which to use or I could just leave it black. So I'm still thinking on that. I've done the other one, so I'll do each one you know both of them different and um, then that way you can see how it looks both ways I'm a bit worried that if I put the turquoise on the back with all the color on the front it looked tacky I think it sort of uh, it might not you know the way you can overdo something so I think I'm gonna go for black or copper so there's a quick rough cut and I can go over it in a minute okay so now I'm just going to press that down. I've got some super glue here ready just in case any little bits fall out before I've um, added the Kato liquid clay because that's very possible. I'll try to just hold the top and bottom now. 
and rub along the sides. I want it to have a bit of a rustic look on the sides, but not too messy. Okay, it's that side. I just want to check it from the front. There's no uh, clay that snuck around, which there is. I don't want any black to be visible from the front. So I'm just removing any little... I can go over it afterwards with, um, again, with the sanding paper. But um, I did just round the edges on these before I did that as well just to get rid of the sharp edges so what I'll do for that side press it all down as much as I can probably going to have to do the back now as well because I've just put my fingers in the wrong place just making they're all adhered well making sure it's all adhered well as well as um, not being visible Okay, I'm going to give that another press because I made a few marks. Okay, just get these out of the way. Some are hard, some are not, so I'm not going to put that back in the clay. Um, when I've done that, if it looks all right, it does. I'm just going to get my stamper. And put that on the back and then that's ready for me to use the liquid clay on the front where is my liquid clay i'm going to use the um oh gosh i've got can't mess my drawers in. I don't want you in this project. Gold leaf, you're my enemy tonight. Only tonight. Alright, so I need a brush. I got a decent one out. I'll do the job. Oh, it's a bit soft actually. I'm gonna get a more appropriate brush. Okay. Put it down there and then work slowly so i'm just literally covering all the polymer clay parts of it and i'm making sure i'm covering over any beads it's not the i won't go over these um sort of crystal beads but anything else i will to make sure it's held in there safely I might go over these little blue ones. I don't think that's going to hurt. I'm trying to do it quite evenly, but it's a bit heavy in certain areas at the moment. I'll try and even it out. Alright, the only things I won't be going over here is those two, so I'll do them first. Um, where I've pressed into these balls, they've kind of um, acted like a little grip for these diamonds because they've overlapped it a little bit, so that's good. That should hold them in nicely.
I'm going to have to go over these because I don't think they'd be in there that long because they didn't really have any, you know, no matter, even if you use liquid clay, it won't grip to sort of polished metal. So there's no nothing for it to grip to. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go over them, but it won't hurt. It might even look better. I'm just trying to get rid of all the thick bits and it will settle in the oven give a nice it should give a nice satin finish rather than a shine so fingers crossed but I have used pearl in this so it might not actually do that but we'll see I'll still like it anyway I'm definitely going to go over this um, for abalone Is something you can do to really gloss up um, poly clay. I haven't found out what it is yet. I think it's, I could be wrong, I think it's Cindy McGee, a tutorial she does, and she says you can totally shine it up, but I haven't been to find out why yet, or how rather. So I think that's everything covered. Let's try and even out this side a bit now. I don't want any sort of lines or streaks, I'm only doing it finely. Okay, so fingers crossed the back is fine. Yeah, and I can put that back in the oven. I'll do the other one as well off camera. Okay, I'll be back soon. I start out of the oven and hopefully you can see it's just got a nice very subtle satin sheen and I can still see the gold and the everything I covered over quite clearly okay so what I'm going to do now I'm using an Inca gold copper which I'm just gonna um gosh hair so I'm just going to take it very gently around the dark of the underlay. I'm not going to be going over the colour, if that makes sense. And I don't want too much on my brush. So I'm going to keep, it's more like um, just a sort of stipple, burnished very gently. So it's got the colour, but it's not in your face. Another hair, hang on a minute. I'd rather put less on and have to go back than overload it. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I've just got a sponge here and I'm doing exactly the same but I want to kind of just cover the top <coughs> apologize um so I just want to cover the burnish the top so that that's why I didn't mind using uh, scrap black clay because I knew I'd be doing this so just try again like before not to over do it whatever colour you use. I decided against the blue in the end, the turquoise blue, which was the Inca gold. I decided I was going to go for this. I think it would have just been too much. I 
Okay, so I'll let them dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so that's the finished piece now. You can see it all clearly. And I'll uh, lift it up as well to the light so you can get an idea. Okay, and then there's your sides and back. Okay, so that's that one done. And this is the other one I did. Um, there's pros and cons for each. I gave that one a slight dome, but I only, I've only got one of those um, things to dome with in that shape. So that one I kept flat, that one I domed. I think I prefer it coming down to a point at the bottom. Um, if I'm being really honest, I wish I hadn't put that in. Um, and I'd probably do those a little smaller next time. So that's just my feedback from what I think from doing it. But I am really pleased. Um, and I think they've worked out really good. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Chris, for um, inspiring me. Bye.